You can just glare at the thing. I don't care. What? <laughs> I did a giant fake smile, and he's horrified. She has a headache in her teeth. Yeah, I got this thing called a power chain. I'm not going to shove my teeth in the camera, because who wants to look at teeth? But anyway, because I have a gap on some back molars, and it has to yank them forward, and I, I'm in pain. <laughs> And my ears are blocked. Everything sounds fuzzy. Oh, do I need to be louder? No, I think you're fine. Look at the meter. It's great. Oh, okay. That's good. I can hear you. I'm right next to you. I know, but <laughs> I was in bed with you and you couldn't hear me and I was busy talking and you're like, huh? <sighs> it's because all of my high range is gone because my ears are plugged. Look at my beautiful hair. Yeah, and Sebastian got a haircut today. Red letter day. Sebastian's first haircut. Isn't he cute? Yeah, he's so cute. And he did such a good job. And when he was all done, he was like, he was looking in the mirror and he was like ch checking out his hair. And But now I'm going to have to gel it all the time. I can't wait to see what it looks like tomorrow. I don't know. And we'll when see. he wakes up and it's all done. I'm just amazed. He was so good. He was so good. I was really, really impressed. Yep. Ah, it's all fine. And then we went and had tacos. Yeah, and it was good. Except for my teeth hurting, but it was good. And they had Space Jam on. And yeah, it's all, all. I'm sitting there looking at Sabrina, and she's kind of looking over my shoulder, and she's like, "This isn't that bad of a movie." And I'm like, I turn around, and there's Michael Jordan, and I'm like, <laughs> I saw it in the theaters. And then Lola Bunny came out, and I pointed out that all of her contemporaries, males, are in love with Lola Bunny, and she just made a face at me. <laughs> anyway, but then that was that was all fun, and yeah. then we came home. Oh, but you forgot we went to the kitchen store and got chocolate. We did go to the kitchen store and get chocolate. That's true. That was yes. before tacos. Yes. Uh, so let's do wrist check. I'm going to remember this week. So it's wrist check time. I felt like having nerd factor today. That's your 53? I don't remember. It's the, it's the modern version of the morning from the fly watch, right? Well, yes, but I don't remember what number it is. It's like CA 53, I think. My biggest complaint is that it doesn't have the date on it, but it... I don't know what those things are. Oh, well, it's a, calc it's a calculator watch. Really? Yeah. I had no idea. Wow. Who, I can't freaking say. Whatever. It does stuff. It's a calculator. You should, you should get proficient with it. And me, I um, I busted out my SBDX uh, 001. Uh, and I decided, I put... um. I put one of the modern recreations of the chocolate bar on it. I, I had to put in a couple little spacers, uh, which I cut from a clear plastic tube from a ballpoint pen. You make these little teeny tiny spacers, and if you get one that's from a clear tube, they're basically invisible. Anyway, but I do love this watch. I should wear it more often. I mean, it's one of Seiko's greatest modern divers, in my opinion, anyway. So, are you going to learn to use that thing? Well, no, I couldn't do it with the phone in the way. I, I know how to work it. Good burp. There. Thank you. Sorry. Two. I think that times. Yes. Two. And then I go equals four. Hey, look at that. I did it. Wow. <laughs> Fantastic. <Yeah. laughs> Okay. Okay, well, let's rock and roll. I don't want to get started because... <laughs> Why? Because it's stupid. <laughs> From Paul W. Hello, Kevin. <laughs> Are you still doing the watch thing? Why do people call him Kevin? It's it's not, and I'm not making fun of this. I'm not... Uh, it's not just you, Paul W. Yeah, Paul W., it is not just you. For some reason, people always tend to call me Kevin. I don't know <laughs> why. It used to be Stephen or Stefan. That used to happen a lot, well, but that, now it's at least Kevin. It has an S. I don't the Kevin thing. I don't know. I don't. I don't understand it. But my name is not Kevin. It's Spencer. But you know, I see Kevin and I'm like, well, he must be me. <laughs> hey, it's Milo. Hi, Milo. Uh, oh, are you still doing the watch thing? That was the question. Every day. <laughs> every every darn day. Greetings. I enjoy mail call with Spencer and Sabrina, and thank you for sharing. What is your opinion on mechanical watch servicing in general, with the rise of mechanical watch popularity and the shortage of qualified technicians to service them? What can we do? The cost to service a watch often exceeds the purchase price. In that case, you may as well just buy a new watch. Best which is Anthony. Well, Anthony, you're not wrong, and I get um, 
I get a lot of inquiries for people with relatively modern watches uh, say, hey, I want to restore this watch. And I look at it and I look online and, you know, there's one watch a person they wanted to have worked on. And I'm like, you can buy the watch brand new for probably less than half what I would charge to service it. Um it's one of those things. I mean, it's a decision that any, everybody needs to make. It depends what it is. Service is often going to be more than the value of the watch. Um, I mean, heck, that's true for a lot of things that people are going to make a decision about. I could, uh, I mean, somebody was trying to sell an MGB GT for, I think, $18,000. No, wait, what was it? He was, no, he, he was trying to sell it for $15,000, but he had put $18,000 into restoring it. And he was just hoping to get some money back. But yeah, you know, I don't know what to do about the, the, the lack of all the people that are doing this work. I mean, everybody I know who is reputable is backed up to the point that they're not taking work anymore. We have a couple generations of missing technicians because everybody thought that quartz watches were going to take over and nobody was going to wear mechanicals anymore. And so the schools closed down and people stopped thinking about this as a career path. And then you have my situation and other people's. So clearly the need is out there. People want to rebuild their watches. They want to maintain their watches. Um, so I don't have a question about that. As for whether an individual watch is worth being resurrected, that's entirely on the owner. I always say, let's save what we can. R E C Y C L E recycle. C A T A C T Y L Caddy. <laughs> okay, next one is multiple questions. I'll read the first one first. Okay. Okay. It's from Alan, Mr. James Duffy of the Sandwich Time channel. Everybody on Instagram, go, if you're on Instagram, go to Sandwich Time channel. Sandwich Time channel. He, he, he does, he, Absolutely deserves a million more followers just because his feed is just sandwiches. <laughs> okay, so I have a cue for your A. What is your favorite sandwich spot and what is your go-to order there? So that's the first question. Well, you know, often when I think of sandwiches, I almost always go back to B&B Pickle Barrel. And they, have that, they have that sandwich and it's Swiss and ham and coleslaw. It was really good. The first time I ever had one, I was like, this is this is amazing. Uh, but the best sandwich I ever had, <laughs> ever had, we went back to New York when we were first together and her sister was working at a hair salon. And next to the hair salon was this, I, in my memory, it's almost like it was just like a tobacco shop. Or yeah, it was really tiny. Like a newspaper shop. It was this tiny place with this glass cabinet and you order your sandwich and it's, it was some Italian guy and it took him forever to make this sandwich, but it was magnificent <laughs> it was so good it was such a great sandwich i, I hear about it all the time it's just a, it was just a standard italian yeah i was grinder. like i was like yeah it's a sandwich i mean but everything the bread and the, all it's got all the different cold cuts and everything and it was the really good quality stuff and it was really really excellent but anyway yeah next time you're in fort collins go to b and b pickle barrel and get your i didn't give my answer i was just finishing mine oh Okay, I thought you were going to the next thing. Nope. My favorite sandwich place is Chiba Hut, which is weed themed. <laughs> so she in the Grateful Dead shirt. <laughs> well, yeah, actually, and their vegetarian sandwich is actually yeah, really good. I got my phone, so okay, it's a vegetarian sandwich. So I know people are gonna be like, "Ow," but whatever, I don't care. It's called the Grifo. It's pepper jack, cream cheese, guacamole, spring mix, onion, tomato, pickle, cucumber sprouts, black olives, shrooms, and house dressing. And it sounds wacky. It's really good. But it is, it's actually, it's really good. It's a good sandwich. Yes. So, I, I like Chiba Hut. Yeah, Chiba Hut's nice. Uh, okay, next part. Watch-related question. With all the rebranding, new movements, and price hikes, do you think Seiko will retire or replace the 7C46 Quartz Tunas anytime soon? Is there even a place for them in the market anymore? Keep up the great videos and banter in 2020. Well, I mean, they still use the 7C46 in all of their all of their um, their Quartz Tuna lines. I mean, they've been they've been making that movement for 30 years. I don't know why. I don't know why they've been making that movement for 30 years. They could have been making the 754Xs for that long, and they're much better, but they went to the 7C46, and it's it's pretty tight, and it keeps rolling. Um, I don't know what they would replace it with. Um, I guess it depends on you know what their goals are. Uh, these days, it seems their goal is to sell you a watch that will run for 
five to eight years and then they want you to buy a new one. But I, I don't know. I don't know. I'd be curious. I wish they reissued the 754Xs. I mean, how hard could it be? Milo. Milo. I want to love on the fat. Milo. Milo. He doesn't want love. Um, from Michael Riera. I see the 7S26 movement on sale online. Aren't they readily available for swaps? They are everywhere. Mm, yes, I mean, some for, sure, of course. Seiko made a billion of them, and they, they've sold them to a bunch of different companies. I don't know what generation they are. I don't know how old they are. I don't know when they were produced. Um, I don't know if they have any QC lubrication issues. If they're the A types, which are the great ones, at this point, they're well over a decade old or more, coming on two decades old. I just don't know what generation. Yeah, there's a million of them out there, though. I mean, which is great because those watches will be available forever and ever and ever and shouldn't ever run out of spare parts, not in my lifetime. From Randy Novick, I've been sick for a while, so I took a hiatus from Friday updates. Glad to be back and hear the news again. Agree 100% that the Valjoux 7750 movements. Love those hockey pucks. Happy New Year and hope you guys get the health stuff sorted out. Oh, and service price rises won't dissuade me from waiting for the lottery when it opens. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what to do about lottery or price rate. No, I'm just checking oh, my back. I don't know what to do about lottery or, or, or rising our prices or both. Or We'll like, figure it out when the time comes. Yeah, Eric Eric and Mike, they were sitting there looking at me. They were like, double your prices. And I was like, what? Triple it. What? Just keep raising your prices until you have the amount of work that you feel comfortable with. And I'm like, it just seems unreasonable to me. My oh. face was because I was wondering what Sebastian was doing. Something thumpy. Um, or maybe we'll do the randomizer. I don't know. I'll figure it out. I like the idea of the randomizer. The randomizer's nice. Because then it's fair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I'm not picking and choosing. Yeah. And I'm not also jacking up my prices to the point that only... I don't know. It just... it. I, I, I just... I just don't want you being like Doctor Strange and only taking the things that you want to take and picking and choosing. That's not fair. No, it's not fair and I don't like it at all and I don't I don't want to be an elitist. It's the last thing I want. No, so we'll, do, we'll figure out the randomizing. I love all watches. It doesn't matter. I mean, they're all fun to work on. Okay, Slim Perkins. Sadie is spot on. You should make it part of your video routine at the end to say, don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Milo says. He says it every day. Yes. The more you say it and make goof out of it, the more likes and subscribers you'll get. People are lazy and you have to tell them what to do. So to say, watch Minus Tech Tips. He's got a great channel and he really knows how to work it. So smash that like button. We're supposed to say it at the end. Oh, can we say it now though? Smash that like button. <coughs> <laughs> yeah, Willow was watching some gamer girl and she like screamed to that at the end. And I was like. <laughs> I don't know. We should just come up with a clip of Sadie doing her yo, yo, yo dance and saying smash that like button. She just walks around the house doing this. <laughs> yeah, she walks into the kitchen and just stops and she's like this. <laughs> And I, I'm just like this, looking at her. And my, well, I'm looking at my computer, and I'm like, waiting for the next thing. Which is? Yo. <laughs> oh, I was going to bust a gasket last night. Why? She was so loud. Oh, yeah, because there's going to be an Apex uh, update. I think he has this stool. But anyway, and the robot character has a mustache, and she wouldn't shut up about it. That what she was talking about? Yes, that's why she wants Apex coins for her birthday. So, so she, she can get a mustache, so an Apex mustache? Yes. Milo needs an Apex mustache. Uh, yeah, she made me watch the, the trailer for it, and I thought that it was something specific that she wanted for her birthday. And she's like, no, it's just cool. Like, all okay. right. Uh, Lane Edwards. Hey, guys, I hope you get better soon. Question for mail call. I have a Malaysia on the dial skx 009 that i found at a pawn shop for 25 dollars serial serial 681332 would that be a 1996 or a 2006 and i think it's a 7s26a movement is that correct a little info would be great yeah if it's an a basically really i mean there are other ways to be looking at the dial code but yeah if it's an a movement that's a 96 a really early one so that's i mean because they came out in 96 so that's it's a first-gen piece. <coughs> Is that it? I guess.
guess so. Okay. From Julie Hill, I got a hold of a first-gen SKX 007J JDM, a 17-year-old watch with the 7S26A movement that's still powering along. I think that's a good call. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm just, I'm just, I've always, I mean, I judge watches by the state of their movements and the A movements, I've always been impressed with them. I've never run into one that was, they've always been wanting to run. They always, even without maintenance, they run well. Um... It's just, Seiko did something really good with them. Randolph Cirillo. I have a guilty pleasure. I love watching old diesel motors come alive after decades of being dormant, like old 60s through 80s semi tractors. Love that. Old motors, pumps, whatever from the 40s. Love that nostalgia. Oh, no, it's great stuff. And a lot of the videos that I watch are, will it run? And it's a lot of things where somebody finds a... You know, a, a, a 65 F-150, F-100 in back of somebody's abandoned barn in Pennsylvania, and they, they, they get the damn thing running. One of the coolest ones I saw was a, was a single, it, they got this giant, like, 1800s water pump running. It was this big thing with a huge flywheel, and it was a single cylinder, low compression, oil combustion engine, and it was just like, fuff. But that's it. That's all it was supposed to do. But this, it had been put in place to pump water for irrigation in like the 1800s, I think. It had been lost several times in the river and then found long afterwards. And by this point, it hadn't, it had been hauled back out of the river, but then hadn't been used for 40 or 50 or 60 years. And they got the thing running. I mean, it wasn't like they weren't flooring it. You couldn't, but it was, it was going single cylinder going along. I'm not listening. That's okay. They are. <laughs> I was reading and listening to him. Uh, from JMR5707 on some video at 1228, how can the Swiss call any winner of the competition the best then? Sounds pretty JV to me for sports. Yeah, Junior Varsity. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. You know, they have their competition and it's for Swiss things only, but God... You know, talk about Seiko being a disruptive force, you know, going in and instead of having continuing to support full and open competitions, you know, the Swiss watch industry just put their head in the ground and it almost killed them. You know, it's that, that old thing, you know, we've always done it this way. That's the death cry of many businesses. Milo doesn't like that. He doesn't? No, he just yelled at you. Milo. <laughs> uh, from Saul Brook. Uh, read the 6130 X chronographs. Are there any Seiko or Swiss column wheel chronographs that use a horizontal rather than vertical clutch? And if so, is the recommendation the same on a horizontal clutch as regards leaving it free running to reduce the wear on the clutch? I want to go see what Sebastian's doing while you're reading this or answering this question. Okay. Oh, hey, Saul. Uh, I did a little bit of research on this. The, the thing with a clutch, though, is that a clutch is always... It's going to engage and disengage, and it's it's always going to be like clutch plates and things like that and springs. If it's not one of those clutchy things, um, then it's going to be wheels and levers interacting, opening and closing like so, and then and then turning as they go, which is kind of the Swiss way to do stuff. I mean, that's how the <coughs> that's how the Valju seven seven five zero and the Venus and all that stuff. That's how they work. Uh, is they they have gears that are are put into and out of the 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 clutch is it's a neat idea uh, and Seiko used it in fact the their their eight R chronographs they produce right now have that clutch it's a module that's on the front of a seven thousand series movement um, that's the only one I know of I don't know I don't know how in the world you'd even attempt a sideways clutch uh, uh, but I I don't know of anybody that does anything like that. He is in Willow's shopping basket. Oh. From CMB. Omega makes a Titan... Titan. Uh, we're not talking about Thanos. A uh, titanium version of the triple date chronograph you want. It's probably my Grail watch. That would be really cool, and I didn't know that. And that would make it actually really special and stand out from a standard speedy, the titanium Omega triple date chronograph. I will look that up. That is that is that is good to know. 
Troy Nacello, does Seiko make a modern mechanical chronograph that is sold today instead of all these quartz or me mecha quartz watches you see today? Yes, absolutely. What the hell is a mecha quartz? Mecha quartz is like, um, well, I, I don't know, depending on how, I always think of it as that Seiko made quartz movements that they have buttons and stuff that have real hard clicky feelings to them, like it's a flyback chronograph. Mm -hmm. So it has quartz accuracy and it keeps time as a quartz, but it's setting and resetting and how it handles feels mechanical. Um, yeah, absolutely they do. If you go to Seiya Japan, that's S-E-I-Y-A, and you go to the Seiko and you look at their chronographs, they, they have a number of them. They're, pardon me, they're 8R powered, which is basically, it's like that Omega 1140 I had last week, which is where you have the three hand movement, and then you have a module that goes on the top of it that pulls power and turns it into a chronograph. It's one of those, but they're, they're like, um, they're like 35 joules, something like that. Uh, but yeah, they sell them. You can go buy one right now. Uh, that light in your glasses is driving me crazy. Is it? Yes. Well, then turn that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and they and actually, if you they made, if I was going to go for a more modern Seiko chronograph, if you look at the the, I don't know if it's Creedor. Or... That light. What? I don't know. Some light is bouncing off of your glasses. It's. I don't know what to tell you. Turn off all the lights till we... But that doesn't make any... Now it's all dark. <laughs> I don't know. Why is it bothering you? Because I'm not listening to you, so I have to focus on something. <sighs> <laughs> any case, in the late 90s, Seiko sort of their modern um, sort of rebirth as kind of like a, a, a higher end watch was late 90s uh, with the internet, especially like eBay, people started getting really into them. And they came out with, a, I don't know if it's Crador or Credor, um, but they came out with a, a number of um, chronographs at that time using their own proprietary movement, and which is a 6S, and they're fantastic. They're great. And you can find them. They're not cheap, but you can find them. Um, but they make a number of chronographs under the Presage line as well. Um, and there's a couple limited edition chronographs, but they, they again, they use this 8R movement. Don't squeak at me. Uh, from TAC178. Hello there, clients. Random question for the week. Are you familiar with Waltham watches, and do you know anyone who could work on some pieces from the early 30s? It's the oldest piece in my collection, and it still runs American-made. Any assistance would be helpful. Oh, sure. I mean, the Waltham factory, I used to drive past there all the time. Um, the I... For... <laughs> There's a, a friend of mine, uh, a, a, a guy, Dan Ringer, he's in West Virginia, and he had an Elgin, it's not a Waltham, but I mean another American watch company of that period, and he had one watch that belonged to his ancestor, and I'm like, uh, well, I don't really work on them more as a hobby, but I'll look at it for you. He had been in his family, and it was, my understanding is that they were made like a like any other modern machine, in that they're on a line, Did all the parts of stepped on by a horse, uh, run over by a cart. Oh. <laughs> uh, but uh, what was I going to say? Oh yeah. So anyway, but I found out trying to repair this thing because you can't get spare parts for them. That it was they made them on a line, and all the parts were in theory the same, but every single watch was in fact subtly different because they were all hand fitted by master watchmakers, and so. No two, I, I ended up getting like, I think 15 different movements and trying to get all the parts to play together to get one that ran well, never happened. Never happened. I don't even know. Hundreds of hours of work trying to get that thing to go. Uh, and then of course I shipped everything back to Dan. I never charged him a thing for it. I sent all the movements back to him because I just wanted to basically to go away. And, uh, and then he said, oh yeah, and I, I think the watch was run over by a, a cart at some point, horse and cart. But... <laughs> Waltham would potentially be that same thing. I don't fool with them anymore. There is a guy in Boulder called Rocky Mountain Time Zone, and he does work on uh, pocket watches. He's a great guy, too. Really nice. Rocky Mountain Time Zone. Yeah, but he didn't say anything about a pocket watch. No, no, he does pocket watches. No, but in the question, <coughs> doesn't talk about pocket watches. just says watches. Uh, well... Waltham never really stopped being a pocket watch company. Even when they made, you know, wristwatches, they were still using their old tech. Well. Um, 
from Lucky Gold Panda. Question for next week. What makes a movement a workhorse? I hear that term a lot for the Valjoux movements you mentioned, but never quite understood what is meant by it. Is it just the quality of the parts or is it the overall design of it? Simplicity, robustness, proven strength of the design, a, a, a track record of excellence. Um, other companies using those movements. I mean, ETA movements are a, are just are a complete, a perfect illustration of this. Those there's so many ETA movements. If you look at all these watches on eBay of you know Swiss watches from the 50s and the 60s, the vast majority are going to have different ETA movements in them. And those movements, once serviced, man, they'll run forever. They'll run and run and run and run. Uh, they're overbuilt. They're strong, and they just go. And, you know, you can run them without a whole lot of maintenance and they'll just keep going. And it's, you know, they're just a workhorse. You can just take it out and just run with it versus something like a, I don't know, some some Universal Geneve uh, Polo Rooter thing with a tiny self-auto winder and they can be kind of funky or something with like a turbo on movement and too fancy. From Varanid 9, the Stargate, the Stargate Triangle with the bezel pip and the steel ring inside the bezel remind me of the bezel on the Omega reissue of their 60 Seamaster dive watch. It's odd that the Stargate just seems like too much to me, and I don't really enjoy wearing them, but I can't stop staring at them. I own three, a steel, a rose gold, and a black, all because I saw this video last year. That was the video where I was like, oh my gosh, I love the Stargate. I, so you love the look on them, but you don't wear them? I'm sorry to hear that. Um, I feel like I tricked you into buying watches you don't like. Uh, but yeah, they're really, they're cool. They're unique. My one thing about the Stargates that I wish is that they had lugs that were 20 millimeters, not 22. That's the only thing I really wish. If they'd, because then that would allow the case to stand out. But the rest of it, I think, is just outstanding. I think they're fantastic. Here's the mail. Is it Katie or is it that other woman? I don't know. Hang on, you people have to wait a second. Katie's our regular male lady, and she's very, very, very nice and extremely responsive, but she's on vacation all the time. It's weird. Um, and so we have had a replacement, and the replacement... Oh, no, it's dude. Oh, it's dude? It's not, it's the... Aretha other, Franklin dude? Yeah, no, this guy, he, he has his headphones on really loudly, and he's listening to Aretha or Whitney... Or he was listening to Tupac, and he is as white as him. <laughs> yeah, he's like an old white dude with like a giant beard. Um, do you want to pause and deal with the mail because he's here? Yeah, sure. Junk mail. Junk mail. Was he listening to anything? Uh, he was listening to uh, "And I Run" by Flock of Seagulls. Oh well, there you go. I, maybe he just likes music. Oh, and he said, "So are you guys working on cl on grandfather clocks now?" And I was like, "Well, my brother gave me one for Christmas last week." He's like, "That was those two boxes I delivered, right?" <laughs> I was like, yep. Oh, did it ding? Is that I don't know. Oh. I don't know. I already know. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, Ooh, it's cold out. Yeah. From Rob. Haha, ha, I know what you're laughing about when you said wood. Haha, <laughs> ha, she's so embarrassed. I can't help it. I am how I am. Uh, after you said Joe Walsh, I started singing Rocky Mountain Way just before you mentioned it. I don't know why. I've not heard that song in decades. They play it all the time here for obvious reasons. All the time. <laughs> all the time. Anyway, Joe lives, as I said, Joe lives right down in Boulder, about 40, mi 40 minutes away. And I don't know. He should stop by. Joe, if you're watching, stop by. Yeah, right. <laughs> Let me show him your new guitar. You mean the one I haven't gotten yet? Uh, well, no, you got you got that guild. No, I know. I'm teasing you. Oh, well, no. That, that, that Any other putative, speculative guitar is, that's its own piece of business. <laughs> I can't play very well, but I like them. They're art. Uh, from Neil Sengupta. Hi, S&S. &S. You guys are my regular Saturday morning viewing. My question for next mail call is, I have heard the Blue Dial 6139 call the... Sever? Sever. Sever. Or something. Whatever. Race car driver, uh, uh, Le Mans driver, um, I think Formula One driver, I'm not sure, died in a car wreck in like 1971 at Watkins Glen, New York. 
uh, but was famous for wearing a Seiko 6139 chronograph. Can you please tell us which reference number should be called a true severe, similar to a true Pogue and a possible true Joe Walsh? Thank you so much. I wish I knew. I've looked. I, I actually, I spent like... He's messing with her rolling cart. I hope he doesn't break it. She's going to be pissed. Wait, can I, I even say that on YouTube anymore? I don't know. Anyway, I even I spent a good couple of hours one day just Googling pictures for his name, I think is Francois. Francois Severe wristwatch or Roch, and just looking at images. And I found some pictures of him wearing watches, but they were all they were dress watches. The I only found the one picture of him where you could clearly see it was a blue dial Seiko 6139. I think it was a notch. I think it was a notch case. I don't know if it was a JDM speed timer. I don't know if it was a 6139-6009 resist notch or if it was a 6000 proof proof. I don't know. We need better photographs. He's a demon. <laughs> uh, from Hans Mayer. Meyer? Mayer? I don't know. Hello, I just bought a Seiko tuna with a 7C46 quartz movement. Can you please tell me how often should a quartz movement be serviced and what can be done in general to prolong the life of the watch? Thanks. Don't let water get into the watch. Um, make sure that you're keeping up on battery changes so that you don't get a leaking battery inside. That's really the two things. If you use it all the time, well, I mean, a quartz watch is going to run whether you're wearing it or not. So. And it's going to use synthetic lubricants and let synthetic lubricants outgas and they sort of vaporize and they go away. So after five or so years, sorry, I've got a cough drop. After five or so years, those need to be renewed, ideally cleaned. But Seiko does specify a thing called a light service. Um, and that's where you basically, you pull the movement on something that is not worn, is not dirty, not damaged, and you basically just lube the pivots from both sides of the of the, of the the plate. I almost never do it because um, the mo era of watches I work on are far too old for that to be effective. But for something that's brand new, possibly, yeah. I mean, I don't, I mean, Seiko's light service is just, I don't even think they do it anymore. Okay. I don't know. He's attacking the dog. From Scott Davis. Gee whiz, Spencer. After watching a number of your videos, I'm inspired to keep my Seiko 6309 original and only get the movement service. I purchased this watch in the mid-80s and used it on and off over the years as I had other watches in rotation. It's been hiding away in a drawer for 10 years or so because it was not running reliably. Seems to run fine and then unpredictably just stops. Looking forward to when you can start taking on new clients. Thanks. Yeah, keep it original. There's no reason not to these days. Is yours a 6309-7049 like a cushion case or is it the slim case diver with the square markers? I'd be curious to know which one you have. Oh. Milo, our old man. Our old man, he's almost 13. Oh. I hope that wasn't on our phone numbers. I don't know. I'll look. Okay. <laughs> Steven UK1, you have to renovate the Omega Chrono Auto ETA module. You have to? Well, why wouldn't I? Uh, I why wouldn't I renovate the ETA module? Um, you know, I can't learn about it unless I take it apart. I mean, I can read manuals and stuff, but I mean, I'm, it's not going into a watch. It came to me naked and it's filthy and it absolutely needs working. And so if I want to know more about it, I got to pull it apart. And so when I have some time someday, I certainly will. 440. Great set of videos. Thanks. I noticed that your movement holder has a center support inside it. Is it okay to use a simpler style holder without the center support to fit hands on a 7002? Yeah, you're... This is the movement holder you're talking about. This is actually... What is he doing? I'll go look. This is actually specifically for a Seiko chronograph. Um the for 6139 if you see you've got the center one there that supports the jewel that is underneath the center chronograph where the pivot is for the in the chronograph bridge <coughs> and then the lower one that supports the pivot for the um 
for the minute counter hand so that when you're setting the hands on these things, you don't push jewels out of place. It just so happens that it's the right size and the right depth to work on other watches. It's a convenient thing. So no, unless you're working on a 6139, you don't need this. Um, it's just it's just one that it, that's very special that for those watches, but I can use it for other things. And I tend to use what's in front of me. Um, I kind of make do. Slim Perkins. I wish you had a 754 at 7002. You could sell it to me. I'd trade you my 6306 towards it. Dude, I have... I, I could build one. I mean, I have... I have all the... I I have all the parts to make one. Literally. It wouldn't be as nice as that one that was... Uh, that customers that I reworked, but I could certainly do it. You need to show me your 6306, though. I'm interested in a 6306. Um the right watch. I'm interested in bringing it in and I can certainly build you a 7548-7000. No joke. I can do it. Um, uh, Aristides uh, Liconis. I hope I got that right. Hello, Spencer. I was wondering, how do you know if the QT99 is accurate? Do you calibrate it against another source or you simply trust that it's accurate by itself? Seiko I've read old literature. Seiko, on the, this, he's asking about my Seiko QT99 quartz tester. Um, Seiko basically had a master accuracy thing that they calibrated their things against. Those, these are pretty robust though. They have to be plugged in basically constantly because the they have a big crystal, series of crystals <coughs> that are in vacuum chambers and they have to be heated to a certain temperature. So the thing's got to be plugged in and running for 20 minutes before you fiddle with it because the accuracy will not be correct. I don't really have to trust that it's correct. I don't know that it's going to be, you know, that when I say, you know, when I say something's to a few hundredths of a second, maybe it's a few hundredths of a second off. Maybe that's not entirely accurate, but I will tell you that observed accuracy after the fact generally seems to match what the QT99 says. I mean, if I was, if I wasn't, you know, playing around, if I wasn't fooling around, I'd get a new quartz tester, which I'm sure would be amazingly accurate, but QT99 is fun to use. From Gerwazy. Um, Sir, I have a question about quartz watches. If a second hand doesn't match the indexes, is it possible to fix it during the overhaul? Oh, sure, because the hands come off anyway. So it's the last thing you do is you, you when you're setting that hand, you pull the crown out and you you set the sweep hand so that it's on the marker and you, you seat it down, you push the crown in and you see if you're hitting the markers. <clears throat> and if you're not, you stop it, pull it, try it again. And then you keep doing that until that thing is right on the markers. From Shane R.G. or J. I have a Citizen Bullhead 2, the same gold and Brad Pitt one with the original Citizen bracelet. My case was the same as Sabrina, so I thought it was very ugly when I first saw it, but then I fell in love with it. It's true. I've got a I've got that other 8100 movement. I've got to rebuild yours so that it's like really reliable. I just need to have time to do it. I never get time to do stuff. Well, I like seeing you. I know. But that's, I mean, you have to make a choice. Me or your Brad Pitt watch. Gee, that's so hard. Brad Pitt. <laughs> well. <laughs> mm. uh, Jimmy Split 7, 7, 77. Great content. Thank you, Spencer. I'm considering the Arnie reissue. Can you tell me if the movement in the reissue is good quality like the original, or is it plastic with no jewels? Plastic. With no jewels? Uh, I don't know about the jewel count, but I, I would be shocked if it has any jewels because quartz movements technically don't really need jewels. They don't even need to be made of metal. They can be made entirely of plastic because the plastic that Seiko uses is self-lubricating um, and they don't really wear. It's an unstressed train. So I don't know. It's going to run as long as it'll run. It is what it is. It's not like the old days. From Paul Cawley. Will Seiko's, Seiko's solar watches last as long as these quartz? I fancy an Arnie reissue, but feel put off by solar. Great video, by the way. My understanding is that Seiko gets their solar tech under license from Citizen. If that is the case, Citizen solar tech, their EcoDrive stuff is bulletproof. 
um, their official statement is that their their charging capacitors will be 80% effective after 20 years. 80% still effective after 20 years. So, I mean, that's, that's pretty good. And if that's the case, then they're going to run forever. Um, and I wouldn't worry too much about that. The biggest thing to worry about, though, is, is if you have to do a repair of any kind uh, because the parts will not be available. But the price point is so low that why not? What the heck? Run with it. Have fun. Well, that's it. That's in the that's the end of the questions. Freezing cold. God, my feet are cold. Sabrina told me a disturbing fact recently. <laughs> I was looking at Instagram and I follow Mental Floss and it said that your feet sweat a pint of sweat a day. And he's been changing his socks multiple times a day now. I just can't. Why, why would one's feet need to sweat? That doesn't make any sense to me. And they're cold at the same time. I, I, I don't understand it. All the time. <clears throat> I don't get it. It makes no sense. Well, it's Friday. It's freezing. My feet are cold. And uh, it's pizza night. So we're going to go and we're going to see what he's destroyed. And that's really, that's about it. Yeah. And for all of you who are suckers for punishment, here is a minute long video of Sebastian getting a haircut. Okay. You guys have a good weekend. Bye bye. Still? Yeah. yeah, don't keep looking at us, okay? Because okay. if you move... Wait, what's your name? Sebastian. Sebastian, can you turn these on for me? Yeah. You can flip that button up like that. Can you do that? You don't want me to turn it up. Let's see that. You gotta put your thumb right there. Put your thumb oh, oh, right there. <laughs> Push that up. Put your thumb. Push that up. Okay. There you go. <laughs> feel that. Feel that right there. Feel the top. Feel that. Touch it. See? Yeah. All right. All right, look straight ahead. There you go. Look. 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 Look.